Bearded dragons are some of the most commonly known reptile in the hobby today. Everybody houses them so differently. A lot of people think they house them the right way, a lot of people think they house them the wrong way, but you can't really go wrong with a bioactive enclosure. So today, we're building a bioactive enclosure for a bearded dragon. Now, this is a job that I'm doing for somebody, but I'm really excited for this because, well, you can't really find too much of this on YouTube. And on top of that, these guys come from Australia, so I accepted this challenge with great pleasure. So starting with the enclosure we are using, it's a Terrafauna 75 gallon breeder. It's four feet wide by 18 tall by 18 deep. The background for this enclosure, I'm gonna actually use styrofoam. Um, as you can see, I'm cutting it here with a hot knife. Now I'm trying to do this so I can try my best to make it look like rock. Now I'm only doing the back of this bioactive enclosure. I am not doing the sides, so my main focus is on this back wall. Now using a wire wheel to kind of carve the foam away, yes, it's messy, but it works phenomenal for trying to get that rock look. I had some wind issues um, on the day I did this. It was very, very windy, but bottom line is I needed to get it done, and this is the fastest, easiest way. Now taking a heat gun, I'm going over the foam uh, about six inches away, and this is gonna help tighten up and clean up the styrofoam a little bit. Now for the enclosure to start taking actual shape. Using S1 silicone, we're gonna start building the back wall, putting a bead of silicone on the bottom of each piece and also on the back to stick to the wall. This is where the enclosure really starts to come to life. So there it is, all siliconed in. Now this is all dry as well. This is a couple hours after I put it together. You can see it has that rock texture to it. And of course there's big gaps and cracks and things like that that we're gonna fill here in a second. Now just using some great stuff, we're gonna go back and fill up those cracks a little bit. Don't have to use too much foam because we are going to break it away to make it look like the background itself. So you can see these are all the areas that I had missed. So once that dries, we can go ahead and start simply breaking off the excess. Then taking a wire wheel again, we are simply going to just kind of touch it up a little bit so it continues that rock look. Don't have to go absolutely crazy with this part, just kind of clean up the edges so that texture continues through into the great stuff foam. Now for the messy part. Now this is dry lock. This is actually gray dry lock and I went and added some concrete pigments, more charcoal color to make it a little bit darker. Just simply pouring this on with the paintbrush, getting every nook and cranny as much as possible. 
Doing a very thick layer with this first coat is very important. Now I gave that first coat about 24 hours to dry just because it was so thick. Now we're gonna go ahead and use a dark brown, which is the white dry lock with some brown pigment in it to give it that nice dark earthy color. Now using a dry brushing technique, we're just lightly going over the background and this is gonna be coat number two. Coat number three, I decided to go with a terracotta color. Uh, this kind of gives it that more Australian look. And I'm not dry brushing this on, I'm more dry blobbing this one on to kind of change the texture around a little bit. Now keep in mind when this stuff does dry, it dries darker just like paint, even though it's not technically paint. Now this build would not have been possible without my good buddy Tanner over at Serpa Design. If you guys don't know who he is, then you're missing out. He's got some amazing videos on bioactive enclosures as well. But I did pick his brain about a lot of this build, so a huge thank you to Tanner for this. For the fourth coat that we are doing, I'm using different browns to kind of top off over the terracotta color. Starting with a very light brown, then moving on, getting a little bit darker and darker, but not as dark as coat number two. As for everything that's on the side from the dry lock, you can very easily just scrape it off with a razor blade and kind of peel off the excess. Time for the substrate. Now for this, I'm actually doing two different layers of substrate. This first part is going to be two parts organic soil, one part uh, eco earth or coconut fiber, and one part sand. Once we get it all blended together, it should look kind of like this. Now putting this all in the bottom, I wanna make this layer a little bit thicker just because this is where the plants are getting 
rooted into, and this is where most of the hydration for the plants is gonna come. Now that we got the soil in, we can go ahead and start figuring out the hardscape. So the wood I'm using is the manzanita wood. Uh, this is a very hard wood, but it does look pretty interesting. Uh, I figured for this particular enclosure, this is probably the only time I'll ever use wood like this is for like a desert enclosure. It's too heavy to use in a normal bioactive enclosure to hang off of a wall. I mean, this wood probably alone weighs 10 pounds each. For this build, I tried a new company for the plants and I gotta tell you, I was quite disappointed. I went with the Bio Dude and it took way too long to get the plants and on top of that, they were packaged horribly. By the time I got them, there was absolutely no dirt in any of them. It was just kind of thrown around the box. I was very disappointed with this order. Now adding some sphagnum moss, just going ahead and putting a couple piles of it around the enclosure. This is actually going to make hydration stations for the insects that are going to be in this enclosure. Now giving it all a nice little wash down slash soak, giving the plants a nice little spray as well because when I did receive them in the mail they were very 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 dry soaking down that moss as well so now that it's all soaked down we're gonna go ahead and cover it with some orchid bark the ones that are exposed now this is gonna give a hiding spot for the isopods also taking some oak leaves and sprinkling them around as well this is gonna be obviously food for the isopods and springtails here in the future. Now, unfortunately, I did not get the isopods or springtails in time for this build, so I wasn't able to film that, but we do have this air plant that I actually got from outside my house. I washed it off really well, let it dry out again, and went ahead and used the Gorilla Glue Super Glue gel to adhere it to one of the rock ledges. Now, of course, we don't want the silicone and styrofoam kind of showing on the side, so I'm actually just gonna take some black acrylic paint. It did take a couple of coats, but just simply covering that up with the black acrylic paint so you kind of can't see it. So the sand we're gonna be using for this enclosure is actually Jurassic Natural Australian Desert Dragon Habitat sand. This stuff is Phenomenal. It comes from Australia. It's a bit expensive, but it really does do an enclosure like this wonders.
So I simply just cut a corner of this bag off and we're just gonna go ahead and pour it in all around the enclosure. And then once we pour it in, I'm actually gonna be using a scaping tool to kind of move it around to get it into more places. I'm actually taking little pinches of the sand as well and kind of throwing it up on the rock ledges, trying to make it look as natural as possible. And there it is, the finished product. I'm pretty happy with it. I really enjoy the way this came out. It was really a fun build. Uh, I was a little disappointed I didn't get the bugs in time for this video, but the bugs that we are using is an arid species of springtail and also isopods as well. But we will talk about those more in the future builds because I will have them for future builds. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, Turn on your little bell notifications and I'll be posting more often. I'll see you guys in the next one.